Hello and welcome to another episode of AI Buzz. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have some cool things out of the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence to talk to you about. Let's get started. So in this episode, I'm going to be talking about some of the different considerations of CPUs in machine learning workstations. And this was actually a little bit difficult to put together because there's a lot of use cases in the world of computing. And, uh, you know, essentially what I mean by that is a CPU that might be great for gaming is not necessarily great for machine learning. Uh, different features of the hardware are going to uh, be better for different applications. Uh, and even, even within the field of machine learning, there's a lot of different use cases that are going to dictate exactly what features you're going to want in your hardware and things like your CPU. My target audience with this video are people looking to build their own workstations uh, to do things like compete in Kaggle competitions. And really, those who don't want to be paying a fortune to cloud services like Amazon. It's for people who, who want this personal workstation uh, to do relatively small machine learning workloads. The reason I say relatively small is this, the spectrum of machine learning is extremely vast and wide. Uh, the needs for a company are going to be very different due to the different volume and also their available budget. In these cases, those companies are probably going to be moving towards something like the cloud or have a pretty serious on-prem uh, data center solution. Considerations that a company like Tesla has to think about are, are not going to really most likely be applied to our smaller personal workstation scale. Uh, and scale, scale is really going to make a massive difference in machine learning. So anyways, let's get into it. I'm going to cover the different components of CPUs and which components of CPUs are important for machine learning at this personal scale that we're going to be talking about. And rather than tell you exactly what kind of CPU to buy, I really want to just provide as much information as possible about different uh, architecture features of CPUs and how this is going to relate to machine learning performance uh, so that you can really make your own decision based on uh, your particular use case as well as what you're looking for in a CPU and your budget. And that being said, if you do end up wanting specific advice for, for your particular use case, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to talk to you about what you're trying to do and hopefully I could offer something of value. All right, so some of the main components of CPUs that we're going to talk about today are cores, threads, and PCIe, uh, PCI Express lanes. Uh, we'll start with cores. Under, everyone understands cores pretty well. More cores are going to allow more parallelization of your workload. And these are closely tied together with threading, where threads are kind of a concept where you're able to split a physical CPU core into several different virtual cores, usually two threads per physical CPU core. And AMD and Intel have their own techniques for, for doing this, but they're both able to kind of do the same threading uh, process. And the number of threads that you get are gonna tell you how many software processes you can really be running on the CPU at one time. Typically you want that as high as possible, but there's a couple other considerations that may or may not outweigh that, as I'll get into in a little bit. Cores and threads are pretty well linked together. Uh, there's another another one that gets talked about quite a bit, and that's PCIe Express lanes. So these are going to be the highways, so to speak, that transfer data between your CPU RAM and your GPU RAM. There are two main compute intensive tasks that the CPU is going to be involved in during machine learning. And those are pre-processing and model training. We're going to talk about uh, pre-processing first. And no matter what your use case is, data preparation and, and reading in data before you kind of start with everything is going to be done almost entirely with your, your CPU. If you're doing bulk pre-processing, the speed of your processing cores is going to be very important. You're going to want a high clock speed. Uh, also, number of cores is going to be important. Python has some really nice libraries that are going to allow you to spread your workload over uh, several CPU cores to really get that parallel 
uh, effect. So considerations with bulk processing are going to be primarily your clock speed, how fast you're able to crank through computations, followed pretty closely by number of CPU cores. Sometimes, however, you're not going to want to be doing a bulk preprocessing. You're going to want to be doing uh, mini batch processing. And this is really where your, the items that you're looking to process are going to be processed in an asynchronous manner. And you're not going to be doing this all at once. And this is oftentimes applied in deep learning models. So the difference here is subtle, but I think it's really important. The number of cores in this situation may outweigh clock speed in certain cases. You really want a high number of cores to be able to interact with and make a lot of parallel calls to your GPU to do that processing. The speed of those cores might be taking a back seat in that scenario, in my opinion. The other compute intensive task is the actual model training of, in itself. Question here is really, are you going to be training deep learning models or not? If you're not, you're likely going to be doing a lot of bulk pre-processing, and then you're going to be taking that big chunk of pre-processed data and moving it onto training a model on your CPU. So in this scenario, I would say clock speed followed by number of cores is, is your priority you are going to want to be looking for. If you're planning to train deep neural networks, you're going to be wanting a lot of cores to be sending that information to the GPU. So again, you're going to want number of cores to be a priority followed by the clock speed of those cores. And you're going to notice that PCIe express lanes did not get a whole lot of uh, discussion here. And that's because of the scale of the machine learning that we're talking about. Uh, so Tim Detmers, he has some great material on his blog where he kind of dives into this. And at this scale, he found there's essentially no performance difference with the number of PCIe lanes. Pretty much mentions just make sure your, your motherboard is able to handle the number of GPUs that you're, you're training on, and you should be all set. However, there is scenarios where the number of lanes is going to play a big, big role. So to, to give you an example of one of those scenarios, uh, we can take a look at Tesla. So the director of artificial intelligence at Tesla, Andre Karpathy, he's working with a, a pretty wild scale of data. And just to give you a little cool context here, he's looking at training data from a million vehicles in real time. <laughs> and he's looking to build all these wild networks. There's there's 48 different networks in one of these these uh materials I was reading of his 48 networks that take a total of 70,000 GPU hours to train. So that's an example of someone who, who really needs to be looking at the number of PCIe lanes that each uh, processor has. I do not think that's a scenario that a single person is ever going to find themselves in. <laughs> so for the vast majority of, of personal machine learning workstations, I don't think that PCIe lanes are going to play a huge role in your performance. So where does this leave us? I think pretty much everything we talked about today is going to boil down into one question. And that is, do you plan on training a lot of deep learning models? If your answer to that question is yes, I would prioritize cores over clock speed. And so for this situation, I would consider an AMD processor, they are absolutely crushing it in the multi-core space lately. And specifically, I think a, a really solid product is the AMD Ryzen 9 3900. This is going to offer you 12 cores or 24 threads. And that's going to be a high enough number to, to really be sending a lot of parallel instructions to your GPU back and forth. So I think for Intensive deep learning, you're going to want a processor like that, potentially out of AMD. Uh, I'll put links into the description if you want to check it out. If you're not going to be doing lots of deep learning, prioritize clock speed over the number of cores. For this situation, I'd consider something on the other side of the fence. That's an Intel processor. So there will be fewer cores, which means less parallelization, but the ones that the computer does have are going to be blazing fast. 
And so for this use case, I'd look at something like the Intel Core i9 9900 octa-core. This is going to give you eight cores, maybe not totally comparable to the 12 cores you get, might get with an AMD, but you're able to overclock these up to five gigahertz. I'll also put links to that in the description as well. So both of these recommendations are not exactly cheap, but unfortunately, this is not a cheap hobby that we've gotten ourselves <laughs> involved in. And, uh, you know, if you, if you really want to be competing in, in Kaggle competitions with a personal workstation and you don't want to be spending a million hours training your models, then you, you likely will need a, a pretty substantial workstation. There's, there's not people placing super high these days training models on a MacBook Air. But like I said earlier, if you want to reach out to me to discuss your specific use case, I would, I would love to hear what you guys are working on and how you're looking to apply machine learning. I can't get enough of this stuff, so, so please reach out to me if you'd like to chat. And uh, I'd be more than happy to offer my two cents on if you're looking for any sort of hardware uh, recommendations. I hope I was able to explain some of the concepts behind why certain CPUs are really going to be beneficial in certain use cases. And I hope that this information will let you make your own informed decisions on what CPU to buy for your machine learning workloads. I'm also hoping to make this a whole series of videos on different components of machine learning workstations. So if you have any suggestions on what I should cover next, let me know in the comment section below. And more generally, if you liked this video, consider giving this a like as well as my channel a subscription. I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a good day. Bye.